First at four, a new case of measles in Metro Detroit. We have a few facts about the patient, also a heads up about the locations where some people may have been exposed. What you need to know coming up. Kim. Hanging on to the last few hours of sunshine with temps in the low to mid 60s. Rain's on the way and it's going to stick around a while. We'll talk about it coming up. We've been watching this for days. Here it is. It is the corpse flower. It has finally bloomed and now it's on its way out. Yet it's still spectacular. We will literally take you inside this magnificent and extremely unusual plant. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. We've got breaking news here first at four. A new case of measles in Michigan. This time, the Detroit Health Department is confirming a case in the city with the possibility of exposure in three locations. Kimberly Gill, working the story from the newsroom with information on the patient. Also, those locations. What's going on here, Kim? Yeah, so Karen, good afternoon, first of all. We never get too much information about the patients because of privacy concerns, but this time we do know this case involves a four-year-old resident of the city of Detroit. We're told the family is following isolation protocols, and so far no other cases have been associated with this particular incident. Measles, as we've been telling you, is highly contagious, and people who were at any of the following locations may have been exposed. So take a look here. The Acadian Urgent Care on Spring Wells in Detroit on April 1st from noon until 1.30. The Wright Health Pharmacy on West Verner uh, between 1.45 and 2 p.m. on that same date, April 1st. And the Children's Hospital of Michigan Emergency Room in Detroit on April 3rd from 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. Those are all places the child was brought for medical treatment. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge explains most people should have protection, but the health department is giving the public an important heads up. If you were at any of the locations where the infected child was seen during the times of concern, you need to consider your vaccination status. If you are fully vaccinated for measles, then you're protected and you don't really have anything to worry about. But if you are unvaccinated or you're just unsure of your status, you should specifically watch for symptoms over the next three weeks. If you develop a fever, cough, runny nose or inflamed eyes, especially if you also have a rash, you should call your doctor to arrange for evaluation. All right, thank you, Dr. McGeorge. Another thing I want to mention, um, the child's diagnosis was just confirmed yesterday. And remember, there can be serious complications if you get sick. About one in five people who get measles will be hospitalized. We'll talk further with Dr. McGeorge tonight when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Well, there's grief and pain this afternoon for some families in Oakland County, and the Sheriff's Department needs your help. Investigators say three people were shot at the North Hill Farms apartment complex in Pontiac. A 24-year-old man was shot in the head. He didn't survive. Two other men in their 20s are expected to recover from their injuries and are already out, the, out of the hospital. Witnesses say there was a party in the parking lot, and an argument broke out after midnight leading to that shooting. If you have any information about this, call the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Michigan State Police sharing this video of a motorcycle driver trying to get away after doing wheelies and donuts around a Dearborn police car. Officers say that it looked like the cyclist was doing about 100 miles an hour at one point. They say they kept tracking him from Dearborn to Farmington Hills, where he eventually ran out of gas and was taken into custody. Officers arrested a 26-year-old guy. Last we checked, charges are pending. Neighbors over on Detroit's east side will come together in just a few hours to talk about growing semi-truck traffic and also those foul odors in their community. A town hall is set for 6 p.m. And for years, ear, air quality and pollution have been hot topics around the Stellantis Mac Avenue plant. The east side community network has organized the meeting to get a better idea of where the problems are and what solutions people are looking for. Leaders from the city, state, EPA and Eagle will be on hand. If you're interested in attending, the town hall will be held from 6 until 8 at the Stoudemeyer Wellness Hub over on Connor Street. You can find registration information at the website on your screen or on the East Side Community Network's Facebook page. All right, let's talk your first forecast. Here's the live look at Metro Airport. Our Wednesday afternoon is looking A-OK, -okay, but what is next? Kim Adams joins us to start looking ahead. Hey, Kim.
Hey, Karen. Well, we've got temps in the 60s, not quite as warm as yesterday, but we'll take it. 64 now in Mount Clemens, Pontiac and Port Huron. Also at City Airport, 63 Metro and 66 out in Ann Arbor. It's cooler than it was yesterday, but we're still a good 5 to 7 degrees above normal for this time of year. In fact, close to 10 degrees in some spots. But it's 13 degrees colder at Metro and in Mount Clemens than it was just 24 hours ago. Pontiac, 10 degrees colder and 11 degrees colder at City Airport. We do have a lot of high, thin clouds, but the clouds are going to start filling in over the next several hours. Tomorrow, rain throughout the entire day could be heavy at times with highs back into the low 60s. Winds start picking up tomorrow and really start gusting on Friday. At this point, Friday looks to be a windy, rainy, and raw day with temps in the mid-50s. But by the end of the weekend, we're back in the 70s. We'll talk about all of it in detail coming up. All right. Thanks, Kim. Muslims around the world are celebrating Eid holiday, which marks the end of Ramadan. But the festivities are been overshadowed by the continuing war in Gaza. It's just about impossible for Palestinians to celebrate as they live in fear and hunger after the Israeli invasion. Hamas, Israel and reps from the U.S., Qatar and Egypt continue ceasefire talks, but it looks like the two sides are really still very far apart. Meantime, we are just hearing two people have been shot at an event in Philadelphia. We're not sure about their injuries and we are monitoring that situation. Inflation proving to be very stubborn as prices just inch up month to month, which could keep interest rates higher. Here are the numbers. Government says March prices are up 3.5 percent from 2023. That's about a third of a percent higher than in February. Remember, the Federal Reserve wants that inflation rate down to 2 percent and has boosted interest rates dramatically, trying to lower prices. We saw some of the biggest price jumps for things like auto insurance, domestic services, baby food and formula. That was the latest there with those consumer price report as we're taking a closer look there. Investors have been waiting for those numbers. Stocks started sinking right after they were released with the Dow Jones slipping more than 500 points at one point. As we look now, at, it has bounced back now just down 1% there. Now, let's talk about the corpse flower in bloom. We showed you live pictures yesterday, first and foremost. 24 hours later, here's what it looks like right now. We've been streaming this signal for 10 days. Thousands of you have taken a peek online. Paula Tutman shows us how the blooming flower is making a stink in Dexter that even some big birds seem to notice. Even on her way out, because she has bloomed, she's hit her peak, she's now closing and she's starting to disintegrate, really before our very eyes. But it, it's incredible how when people see her and, and smell her, they almost speak about her in terms of poetry. We've been watching her for more than a week, nicknamed Corpsey by the family who raised her. Our live stream captures one of nature's most spectacular feats in a time lapse. Named the corpse flower because of its native island of Sumatra when it blooms, which is rare, its pollinators are carrion bugs like flies and beetles that eat rotting flesh. And so it behaves and smells like a dying corpse to get those pollinators to cooperate. What do you see? What's it look like? Uh, this cone in the center swells out at the bottom. Kevin and Barbie Hauser opened their home conservatory to watch this amazing feat of nature, and it did not disappoint. Just after noon Monday, it began to open. We were outside. The buzzards are circling. And then a bunch of turkey vultures came just swarming out there. It was really cool. It kind of ramped up to this just unbearable, you know, you were describing it as 10 deer piled up. It was worse than that. 75-year-old Martha Freelander, a former biology teacher, climbed a ladder to peer inside. And the purple on the petals is just beautiful. It looks like deep wine. For those lucky enough, they got to see for themselves how Mother Nature tricks whom and what she needs to in order to procreate. There was a red fluid almost like wine color and consistency dripping down into the uh, in, into sort of this flower pot here and it was like blood it was so you know it's just amazing to think that this this um, this plant tricked you know not just the the, uh, the dumb insects but also you know the birds of prey and every and, and us into thinking that something had died in here but it is her spectacular size and beauty that is equally as curious and yes stunning. It's just, uh, you know, life is uh, cruel and vicious, right? And so this plant's figured out a way to uh, survive in that world. And really, by this time tomorrow, all of this will be gone.
like it was never even there. Mother Nature at her finest and most unusual. In Dexter, Paula Tutman, Local 4. So interesting. All right, thanks, Paula. Here is one more look at that flower. Paula tells us the bloom has even captured the attention of scientists around the country. Tonight at 530, Paula shows us the lessons learned from this amazing natural wonder.